Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson and welcome to Understanding Construction Drawings. Today we're going to be looking at how to use a tape measure, how it reads. I'm finding that a lot of new people to construction, you know, maybe for whatever the reason, uh, they really weren't told how tape measures work and how fractions of an inch on a tape measure are shown. As well in Canada, we also have metric that we have to contend with. In the US, it's going to be all imperial but it's really good to have the fundamentals down of how a tape measure works and how to read it. And so we'll go right from the very basics today. Now, if you're new to my channel, please click subscribe. I have everything about construction on various different playlists on my channel. If you click notifications, you'll see as I post new notifications, everything from Microsoft Project, construction business management, construction project management, the technical side, right the way through. So looking forward to building this community together. All right, let's get started. So we have a tape measure here. I've got the listed from, you can see it's listed from one, two, three, four inches on this image. And what we have here is we've got this broken up into fractions of an inch. Most tape measures you're gonna find go to the nearest 16th of an inch. And what that means is that this is broken down into 16 equal spaces. So I can count these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and the last one here is 16. So we've got 16 increments, 16 spaces. Each one of these is a fraction of an inch. So we're measuring to the nearest 16th of an inch, typically. I'll show you another example in a minute, but typically we're doing that. And you can visually, that's the visual cue you get used to when you're looking at a measurement. Is it in the middle between two inches and three inches? There's 12 inches and a foot recall. And so is this in the middle? Well, then that's a half an inch. If it's between the two inch and the half inch, well, then it's a quarter of an inch. If it's between the two and the quarter, it's an eighth of an inch. And between basically the two and the first tick, a sixteenth of an inch, right? So these are how things are broken up. And these are things that are measurements that we uh, use in construction. So here I've got three tape measures. On the top one, to be honest, I've never seen a tape measure like that where it's got all of them, but this one actually did. I kind of like that for demonstration purposes, for sure. Uh, it really sort of spells it out uh, through the tape measure, the different sizes. The other thing that, as we'll zoom in a little bit on this one, the other thing that you'll notice, it kind of changes at the one foot mark. It goes into, uh, up to the one foot mark, it's actually even more detailed. It goes to the nearest uh, 32nd of an inch because that's an eighth of an inch. Then half of an eighth, well, then we got a, a 16th and half of a 16th is a 32nd. So basically the uh, denominator keeps doubling as you go to smaller and smaller increments. Usually framers, you know, when we're, we're doing house on work and that sort of thing, they might even call down to each other, I need a piece that is 12 and a quarter light. If they say 12 and a quarter light, what they're really saying is 12 and 3 sixteenths. It's just saying it's a little bit on the light side. It's not quite an eighth. It's more than an eighth and it's not quite a quarter. It's less than a quarter, right? Or they might say a quarter full. And that would typically mean that you're in between a quarter and three eighths instead of saying, well, we're at five sixteenths, right? And then there's a little bit of more math that's involved with that in your head. Uh, and it keeps it a little bit simpler when you're yelling instructions to each other. Uh, but basically, our measurements in Imperial, they're not in decimals. I find a lot of my students in that they're so used to the metric system or used to decimals that they think that this is basically, okay, so yeah, so that will be 12 and 12.5 inches, right? And it is there, but it kind of loses itself when they start looking at these and counting them like they're decimals because it's broken up into 16 spaces, 16 sections. That's why we've got 16 of an inch that we're measuring to. And typically, like I said, the tape measure, it'll be, you know, in sixteenths, you'll, you'll give measurements very often to the nearest sixteenth or even to the nearest eighth, where you might use the full or the light aspect. And that's pretty easy to communicate that way. Now, going back to this shot here, you can also see we've got metric on the bottom of these tapes. 
Uh, to my friends in the U.S., uh, you're probably typically just used to the Imperial, which actually makes it less likely to make a lot of mistakes. When you're going jumping between systems, uh, it's easier to make mistakes. Our building code is all in metric, uh, and the way we, we actually build things, it's a combination of both. You know, our sheet goods, like our drywall and our plywood, they come in four foot by eight foot sheets. And so we actually lay out to specific centering with material like 16 inches on center 12 inches on center 24 inches on center these are standard spacings but our building code says 400 on center or 40 centimeters as that's being shown right 400 millimeters on center well you can see by this image 400 millimeters which is indicated by 40 here which is indicating 40 centimeters the nice thing about metric it is decimal you can just add a zero to that and now you've got millimeters which is 400 millimeters which is not quite 16 16 inches and if we were to lay out our plywood and our drywall at 400 it wouldn't line up the sheet would miss like it wouldn't be a perfect setup especially as we go from uh, sheet to sheet so in Canada, we understand the fact that if the drawings say 400, we can lay it out to 16 inches on center. If the drawings say 600, we can lay it out to two foot on center. If the drawings say 300 millimeters on center, we can lay it out to 12 inches. So that you have to know when you work in the construction industry here. In the States, it's 12 inches is on center is 12 inches. 16 inches is 16 inches. So there's no room for confusing confusion going on there now you notice this little diamond here those of you that work in construction is anybody familiar with that why would they have this diamond here by the way they got another one uh after 38 inches right and it goes on there's little diamonds that are placed here and you can see in this one too uh the all uh imperial one right this one it's a cheaper tape measure so it doesn't have it <laughs> so that's the difference between getting uh, pretty good tape measures and a cheaper tape measure it doesn't bother to put those things so in this particular case 19.2 it's another standard spacing 19.2 divides evenly into eight foot five times 19.2 gives you 96 inches so if you're looking for on center spacing there's some builders that will build with 19.2 on center for their studs. It widens the, the stud cavity. Uh, you buy your bad insulation at 19.2 insulation, it, it'll friction fit in that space, and you have less wood in the wall. It improves the effective R value of that wall. So it makes the effective R value better for the wall as in total. Um, so you're improving the insulating qualities of the wall. You're reducing the studs. Uh, there's a lot of advantages in a lot of ways to that. So it's just another spacing requirement that's kind of uh, wasn't as commonly used until the last 10 or 12 years, I would say. I see some production builders that are using it quite commonly um, that way because you can save a lot on the materials and make a more energy efficient house at the same time. So yes, we have these different spacings that we have here that that breaks this down we have the nice thing is if you have a metric and basically a imperial one you can do quick conversions like you can see where you're at with your measurements uh, very very quickly uh, so that it's not hard to um, manage that or visualize um, those differences there's no conversion or that sort of thing you can lay it out very quickly the disadvantage is if you're laying stuff out, it's nice to be able to lay it out that you can mark it on both sides of the tape when it's imperial, right? Um, so that's why a lot of, if, if you're working in a low-rise residential where we predominantly do things in imperial, it's nice and quick to do your layouts using just an imperial tape. But if you're working in an area where you're converting back and forth, it may be to your advantage to have a imperial and metric uh, tape that has both um, that way. And so when we look at measurements on a drawing like this one here, you know, you can see the measurements and you notice that the measurements, they have a dash between them. So it's like uh, three foot dash 11 inches, right? That's separating feet from inches. So you're separating feet from inches. So when you go back here, you notice here it is saying uh, 16 inches, 17 inches. 
Well, your drawings aren't saying that. Your drawings would say one foot four inches, one foot dash four inches. So you got to watch on the difference between what you're reading on a drawing and how it actually gets measured and laid out. Because that, I find, causes uh, confusion for newbies, right? Like this is three foot 11. Um, it's not 311 inches. Like there's, there's places where I can see, and sometimes on drawings, it's not always that clear. Like it might be 12 and then they didn't put the dash. Uh, and or a 14 and they didn't put the dash and there's like a nine but there's the dash and for the uh, basically the feet and the inches and then some people misread it and will say oh that's four that's 149 inches no it's 14 foot nine inches right 14 foot nine inches so those little mistakes can be costly and, and you know if you're visualizing it there's not a huge difference between 14 foot nine and 149 inches but it's gonna be a problem, right? So you have to be careful of how the measurements are indicated on the drawing. So you can see feet with the single dash, the double dash is uh, inches, and the dash is that, that little hyphen is separating them. So the feet from the inches get separated on our drawings with this sort of zoom in that you can see things a little bit um, better that way. And so when you're measuring, one foot six inches or 10 foot it would say 10 foot at some point six inches you're looking for the foot indicators and then you're doing the small amounts if for some reason somebody's written on a sketch because that happens too and they might just say oh it's 77 inches by 44 inches then you got to be looking over here right the 44 inches not four foot four 44 inches again 44 inches right uh, is 44 inches. Four foot four is 52 inches. So you got to be careful that you don't make those mistakes in the measurements. This one, as I said, it doesn't have, this is actually pretty good the way that they've done this because they've got all this other stuff here, right? They got metric, they got basically the feet and they basically put the inches, right? But they also put in the side one foot two, one foot three, one foot four, one foot five for that line. So they put that interpretation there, just like this put that there. So they've actually managed on this one tape to fit a lot of information here. So it's very detailed that way. For some, you might find, oh, it's too crowded. I like it more, I'm less likely to make a mistake. I'm using this, right? Uh, this one I would say is, is not so good because, you know, again, it's 13, uh, one foot, 13 inches, 14 inches, 15 inches. I was always about to make a mistake there myself. Pretty easy to do. If it says on the drawing one foot four, I gotta do, okay, one foot, okay, so that's one, two, three, four. If I'm doing this all day, I'm gonna make some mistakes, just even though I know what I'm doing, I'm gonna make some mistakes. You always gotta look at the tools that you're using and how you can make something less likely for you to make a mistake. So while this tape measure may only cost you know, seven bucks and this tape measure may cost 20 bucks and this tape measure may cost 23 bucks. You're probably gonna to wanna to decide between these two better quality tape measures. Not all things are created equal. Uh, as well, you know, how well is this, you know, that adjustment, the adjustment part. When you're pulling on that, that adjustable part, so it moves the thickness of the edge of the tape, right? Is it high quality? Does it move freely? Because it's not a mistake that it moves. It should be able that you hook on the edge or you push it against something. It's allowing for the thickness of basically the hook in that movement. So that's important too when you're purchasing a tape and that it's functioning properly when you're using the tape measure. Because uh, over time, tape measures wear and there's problems and that could seize up for a variety of reasons. I've seen pretty much everything with tape measures. Um, that goes on and carefully looking at what the measurement is and you know maybe you're not the framer maybe you're the, uh, basically a site super assistant site super a field coordinator uh, project coordinator and you're asked to do some measurements and checks right make sure that you're looking at what does the drawing say six foot four inches and then you're looking onto that tape measure to find six foot four inches and that if we're dealing in fractions, it's dealing in sixteenths of an inch typically, but if you're not sure, you can just count them out. If I count them out over here, they'll come out to 32, 
right? So if I count them out uh, at that earlier part here, that'll work out to 32, 30 seconds of an inch, right? Not common, uh, but just so you know, you can always figure it out by counting it and seeing what it is like I did earlier. And that's the breakdown of, you know, a tape measure and these measurements that are in fractions of an inch. If we need to convert a fraction of an inch to decimals, well, then we just have to divide the numerator by the denominator. So just like if I take uh, this, uh, fra this, um, well, I'll find it here. If I take five divided by eight, that's going to give me 0.625, right? 0.625. Just like if I divide one by four, it's going to give me 0.25. So this is where your decimals, if you need to convert to decimals of an inch, can come into play. If there's any kind of conversions you need to do, there's all kinds of uh, metric uh, imperial conversion calculators you can download onto your iPhone or Android device. Uh, one of the better ones is um, is Construction Master uh, for Construction Works. It's very good for roof layouts, stair layouts, and a whole bunch of other things. It's got a bunch of predefined buttons in the app that you can use, so I would recommend that. Uh, I think it's, it's, it used to be a little bit expensive, but it does a, a, a very good job. And so these things are, in the long run, very not costly to you as you learn things going forward. So that's what I wanted to cover in measurements today. Hopefully, you got something that you were missing before, especially if you're new to the industry. I think if you've been in the industry for a while, you get this. But if not, this is your introduction. So I'm Tom Stevenson. Oh, by the way, don't forget to click subscribe and we'll see you next time. Have a wonderful day. Bye for now.